Hey everyone, this video is about the Casio AI-1000, a remarkable pocket computer that Casio released around 1989 that supported the Lisp programming language. And the AI-1000 was only released in Japan and they're quite rare now. Uh, there's no manual available online, uh, but as we'll see, it supports an orthodox dialect of Lisp. Uh, that is reasonably straightforward to pick up for those familiar with the language. And there are also ROM disassemblies available that list the functions and symbols supported. And the AI-1000 also supported pluggable ROM modules uh, for BASIC, C and Prolog. Uh, and it had a sister calculator, uh, the Casio PB2000C, uh, with a similar form factor that supported C as its primary language. And although they both had the same processor as the Casio VX4 pocket computer, uh, which I have a separate video on, these two devices were more likely aimed at professional users. And AI was a major area of research at the time in Japan. Uh, for example, in 1982, Japan's Ministry of International Trade and Industry began the fifth generation computer systems project, or FGCS, whose aim was to find a new architecture of computer uh, suitable for AI applications, and it used a variant of Prolog. And some American computer experts at the time portrayed it as an economic threat to the US uh, framing up an AI arms race. But as misleading as that was, it does help to indicate the intense level of interest in the field at the time in both Japan and the US. And I'll include a link in the video description uh, to a photo of John McCarthy, who developed LISP and coined the term artificial intelligence uh, using the AI-1000 while visiting Japan. Physically, the AI-1000 has a plastic body uh, on its left side as a physical on-off switch, uh, and there's also a power port. Uh, on its right side is an RS-232 port uh, that supported cassette and floppy drives, and on its top is a ROM card slot. Uh, on the back is uh, a lock for the ROM, uh, and also uh, two uh, switches uh, to reset the device. Uh, like many Casio calculators, the back needs to be unscrewed uh, to replace the two coin cell batteries. So the AI-1000 has a 192 uh, by 32 pixel LCD screen that can display four lines of text. And the device has an 8-bit Hitachi HD61700 processor, 64K of ROM and 32K of RAM. The device has a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, there's a shift key that provides access to a lot of common Lisp keywords and symbols. And there's also a green key uh, that turns on Japanese character support. Uh, the device also has uh, five dynamic function keys uh, that allow um, navigation through menus that I'll demonstrate shortly. Uh, and it comes with a uh, rigid plastic case. And the AI-1000 has a similar basic calculator mode to the VX4, accessible via the cal button. Uh, and so here I can type in, say, uh, 2 plus 3 times 4, and then hit the exe to evaluate. And I can call functions and assign to variables, so say, x equals sine uh, 45. Uh, and then I can use X in an expression. And the AI-1000 also has the same formula entry feature as the VX4. So say if I type in uh, Newton's second law, uh, I can hit the IN key, and uh, then the device will uh, enter that equation into memory. And now I can hit uh, CALC. Uh, and I'll get prompted uh, for the unknown, so, so 50 and 20. Uh, and as far as I know, you cannot call user-defined functions from uh, calculator mode. And so to switch to this mode, we can hit the menu key. And uh, here there are a number of menu options that we can scroll through. Uh, but we'll select uh, Lisp. And this will drop us into an interactive Lisp REPL or read evaluate print loop. 
And so here we can enter uh, Lisp expressions and they'll be evaluated. Uh, so in Lisp syntax, to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4, uh, you would enter Uh, and the AI1000 supports the usual Lisp atoms and S expressions. So, say, I can assign a list of numbers uh, to a variable x uh, using setf. Uh, and the AI1000 also supports strings, symbols, and vectors uh, using the normal Lisp syntax. And to define a function, we use the defund command. So to create a function to square a number, uh, we type and then we can use it. We can pass the name of the function to say mapcar, which applies a function to each item in the list. And since Lisp is a true functional language, uh, you can also write functions that create other functions. And here it's useful to know that the AI1000 uses a Lisp2 dialect like Common Lisp or Emacs Lisp, not a Lisp1 dialect like Scheme or Closure. This just means that it has two separate namespaces for functions and variables. So if you, if you assign a function to a variable, there's a special syntax for calling that function. So for example, we can create a function add in uh, that will pass an argument into uh, that will return another function that adds into a number. And here we need to use the function in lambda keywords to create an anonymous function without a name. Uh, and once we have add in, uh, we can ask it uh, for a function to add, uh, say, 100. Uh, so because the variable add uh, 100 is not in the function namespace, we can't call it directly. Uh, instead, we need to use the special uh, fun call function. Uh, and you can always uh, wrap this in a defun. And the AI1000 also supports Lisp macros, and macros in Lisp are incredibly powerful. They're actually functions that transform uh, Lisp code into different Lisp code. And here I'll uh, use the menu and the arrow keys uh, and the edit button uh, to show an example of a simple macro. And so this is uh, called set f2, uh, which effectively adds a new command to the language, uh, allowing for the initialization of two variables at once uh, using one value. So the set f2 macro takes three arguments uh, and effectively returns the code that this will get expanded into uh, basically two uh, separate set f statements. And so I can hit the Lisp uh, function key. Uh, to evaluate this file. Uh, and now I can use the macro. So uh, And now uh, x and y variables are both created. 
uh, and initialized uh, to the same value. And this is a simple example, but uh, Macros and Lisp are really powerful tools for metaprogramming and uh, turning Lisp into that domain-specific language uh, for the problem at hand. And the AR1000 comes with some example libraries, including this one that solves the uh, Tower of Hanoi uh, puzzle uh, using a recursive function. And so if we run this, uh, it'll load the file, and then there's an interactive program. So uh, let's pick, say, three disks. And so the Casio AI-1000 is a really unique and beautiful device. I don't I know of any other pocket computers or calculators that supported uh, the full Lisp programming language. And having the power of a true functional language in this form factor is quite remarkable. Uh, there is a software simulator available for the AI-1000 as part of their Pocket Emule app. Uh, this is quite accurate since it runs the original ROM under hardware emulation. And I'll include the link in the description below. And so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted of new videos.